So, we're gonna go through some Reddit things once again. Something really new, I know. The Stoic Emperor. Adds the Stoic Emperor on Twitter, apparently. Harsh feedback hurts less than harsh outcomes. I would say so, yeah. I think it is the case. I think that um, even though feedback is something that... I think when it comes to feedback, it really heavily and incredibly depends on how you are communicating it. And, you know, like your tonality, the words that you're using, and so on and so on and so on. Because if you are an asshole about that, if you're just... I don't know, like, it, it just incredibly also just comes up to your tonality. You know, you can say two exact same things but in a different way and it's gonna uh, one sound very arrogant and shitty and on the other hand the other time it's gonna be completely neutral and fine but yeah think about that keep that in mind and and yeah i think you're gonna have better time maybe i don't know i just don't know just had to think about something anyway Let's see what there is. Focus on growth, not perfection. Don't aim to be perfect, aim to grow as a person. Grow to better than what you used to be. To be better than you used to be. Focus on the past, but focusing on the past will not help you grow. It will delay it. Look surpass it, look over it, and never look back at it. Keep growing, keep learning, keep developing. I do want to say something. If I focus on the past, it will help me grow. I'll give you an example. Um, in the past, I've been a pretty shitty ass person to another person, um, actually to my girlfriend at the time, my first and, and only girlfriend up to this point. And I sometimes really have been the shittiest person there was, and, and I still regret that so much, so, so incredibly much that I'm still so sorry for being that type of person, that kind of person. But I, but I learned from that and looking into the past and then just seeing that and knowing that and realizing that and keeping that in mind helps me to not be that person anymore the person that i don't want to be the person that i that i don't want to be remembered as and yeah so yeah i think of course if you're just living in the past and if you're just devastated by that and you're just so incredibly unhappy about what you did once and you this might be inhibiting your ability to just do something about things but yeah i know it really depends on you and how you think about your past and not thinking about your past per se what the fuck is that anyway never be a prisoner of your past it was just a lesson not a life sentence i think this actually summarizes the whole thing quite well the design of this lamp is excellent let's actually have a look This is actually really amazing. This is super nice. You can, um, for the podcast listeners, you can um, change the way the lamp is formed, you know, from a s cylinder that is big on the bottom, bottom and, and just narrow on the top to it being narrow on the bottom and big on the top so that the light is actually reflected to the uh, to the ceiling rather than to the floor, which just changes the whole mood and the whole uh, lighting situation completely. Chris Rock, JC, Bodrillard and Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment in Simulacra and Simulation. Yeah. Trying to nail the... Try to nail the certain medieval style set in a fantasy world. I think it looks cool. Don't let the past define a person you are today. Once again, why is it about the past all the fucking time? I know that a lot of people are struggling with that. And I know a lot of people are um, are just living way too too much in the past. But, but as I said, you, you can learn so much from things and failures and, and, and stuff that you did in the past and had in the past. So we shouldn't be neglecting that, you know, we shouldn't be neglecting our just opportunity to grow. Why should we? Just this fucking dumb. It is quite the the complete opposite of what all those people are trying to do and trying to teach and trying to communicate. Like, okay, don't live in the past because if you beat yourself up every single time and judge yourself every single time and think about the past, well, yeah, you're not going to grow. You're going to feel miserable and you're going to feel bad. But what I want to say is 
look back and see it in a neutral light. Okay, this is something that I did and I'm going to keep that in mind so that I'm not going to do it fucking again. It's a lesson, not a life sentence. It's not what I am always going to be like. It's not the person that I'm always going to be like. Because I can change. We all can change. We can change our mind. We can change our behavior. We can change the way we speak. We can change the way we act. We can change the way how we are. You know, we can change so many things. We are not, we are not stuck in, in the person that we are. We can even change physically. Guess what? You can work out. You can start to, to run. You can start to walk. You can do something. Do something different than you did yesterday. You know, for example, for maybe somebody that is uh, quite a bit overweight, start walking more. Make this a habit. You can even still eat the same amount of food. But if you walk more, you're going to burn more calories. You know, and you're going to lose for sure some weight because you walk more and you expand more. It just makes sense. You know, it, it actually doesn't take that much as I'm just realizing. It just takes something. It's ta- it just takes more than it did yesterday. Quite. Of course, you have to uh, periodize that quite, you know, because, um, you know, if you still eat the same, but you walk, of course, you're going to just lose some fat and you just um, lose some weight in general. But um, it is going to stagnate at some point, you know, and then you have to just do even more and or eat even less, something like that. So, but we can change ourselves. We always can and we are always going to be able to do so, you know. Also in the past, we were always able to do so and we will always be able to do so. Anyway, um, you will never speak to anyone more than you speak to yourself in your head. Be kind to yourself. Today, I'm deciding to no longer sabotage my own thoughts by being so negative to myself. It took a lifetime for me to figure this out. I'm tired of being so negative internally and always thinking the worst. Today, I'm surrendering to positivity, only good thoughts from here on out. Uh, well, of, the, the problem with such postings that I'm having is that, well, yeah, you know, you, you, you might have found this little spark of motivation to put this piece together, but is this spark of motivation going to, um, going to let you keep that habit? You know, a lot of people are also doing it in a way of, okay, from now on, I'm not going to do this, that, these, and the other thing. Well, what about starting with one thing? It's about habits. Being negative is a habit. Drinking milk every single day is a habit. Eating certain things every single day is a habit. Smoking is a habit. Drinking is a habit. But we are not breaking habits. And there is some amazing, and I've been talking about it for actually years now, um, James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits. I might actually be doing it... Well, I might actually be going through his articles once again, because they're so incredible. They're so incredible. I know you can learn so much from these free fucking articles. Um, all about habits and how to exchange them, because we don't break habits, we exchange them. For example, we or you or, or somebody might be able to exchange the habit of smoking with the habit of drinking a glass of water. Of course, Smoking uh, triggers certain uh, responses, some maybe even hormonal responses. I think even, is dopamine a hormone? I think it is. Um, And water might not be doing so. So it might not be kind of the uh, equivalent, if this is even a word, I think it is. I don't know, of the other thing, of smoking. But, But in the end, we are exchanging habits. And it might be something that you have seen as well. But, but I've, I've certainly seen it. Like I've actually forgotten about brushing my fucking teeth because I started working out in the morning. And so I didn't have this chain reaction, quote unquote, of, okay, I'm going to get up. Well, no, it's been about not eating something in the morning, I guess. You know, normally I wake up, eat something, and then I just brush my teeth. I'm, I have never actually done it the opposite way, brushing my teeth and then eating something. For me, this doesn't make any fucking sense. But anyway... Just because I started to not eat something in the morning, I've kind of lost the habit of brushing my teeth because there was the chain reaction of getting up, eating, brushing my teeth. And now there was getting up, doing nothing or working actually. And yeah, you know, then it it was gone quite. Which leads to maybe um, 
certain people or most people smoke at the same points of time every single day maybe in the break maybe whenever and if you just change just quote unquote you know please don't take it as 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 easy quite um if you change the way you structure your day and um these quote unquote chain reactions are structured then you might also be able to get rid of a certain habit because you've changed the whole thing you know something to think about something to keep in mind but please check out Jim, james clear's uh, stuff it is truly amazing not gonna lie don't say i'm a failure instead say this was a failed attempt failure is an event not a person totally the case struggle i think this is gonna be the last one but maybe i'm gonna record a third episode today but i'm not sure um i've been finding pre- Finding pretty much everything at the moment really difficult to cope with. The whole coronavirus situation is really hard for me because there is no expiry date on when this is going to end. And that means it's really uncertain, which sets uh, which sets my anxiety off completely. I've lost all motivation to do pretty much anything. And since I'm self-employed and working at home, it's been a real struggle on some days to drag myself out of bed and actually do any work. I've tried to set myself small tasks in order to combat this and sometimes I can't complete those which I price myself for doing. I just wonder if anyone has any tips or if anyone is just feeling the same as me. That Trillions of people are, well, trillions, but millions of people are feeling the same way, I think. Hey Rubix, which is the username. I was just writing a long answer to a very similar question on a different subreddit. We are... St- we- Uh, We are all struggling in varying degrees, but when we share, we get to connect with our what unifying humanity. I totally get you. I find myself in the dumps often, and I have a few ways to get out of it. I can share those with you. Maybe they'll help you too. I honestly believe there is a physical, emotional, spiritual component to every crisis. The physical stuff. Yes, you can do a little bit of movement, get some endorphins going, make it a habit, a small habit that can stick. But you need to have the desire to get somewhere other than where you are. A lot of us can't find that, so a little bit of physicality can really help. You can do five push-ups every time you go to bed. Exercise is a big boost, even though it sounds like a drain. Can you give someone a hug? Do you have a pet? Now that brings us to the emotional side. Do we have anyone you can call a uh, call up and speak to you said no friends but any family members the hardest thing i find in this sort of space is opening up to people so i'm glad you did here you know once you start speaking to someone you also start seeing yourself and your situation a little differently which is also the reason reason why writing down things often helps because by writing things down clearly which you have to do by writing you know speaking is something different could also help But if you write it down, you really have to just sort your thoughts and sort your emotions. And then you're going to see things in a different light. You're going to see things differently. But being stuck in your head and beating yourself up all day, that's just a one-way street, as you know. Sometimes a little distraction is helpful helpful to take your mind off an immediate black hole. You know that already. Uh, When was the last time you watched Charlie Chaplin, like The Kid or Buster Keaton? It may not work for you, but a camera is a great social lubricant. I've been a street photographer. For me, with a camera in hand, to strike up a conversation with someone on the street is no big deal. Sometimes it's a very light-hearted, fun sort of thing. I lived in a very busy city earlier, so I had no dearth of subjects. Have you ever considered writing, journaling, blogging, a notebook? Take your travels and put them on subtrack. Just dumb it all. Even better, start a newsletter. Well... That's what I did. It's even subtitled for anyone who is suffering. Now to the spiritual side. I'm not a religious person in any way, but I do believe in a higher power or a power greater than myself because I've hit uh, bottom and found a way up with 12 steps. Hmm, reminds me of Jordan Peterson. I don't know why. So what I do when I find myself in this in the shits is to send a little prayer. I pray for serenity. God... Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Do you know why it works? Because I acknowledge that I, in and of myself, am unable to think my way out of this. So I'm a little bit 
I am a little bit willing to put my thinking down and accept your help via higher power. Our spirit knows what our minds don't, that we are all interconnected. Asking for help is the first step to receiving it. Yeah. Have you read the Inner Child Workbook by Kath Catherine Taylor? There is a PDF floating around on blah, blah, blah. So check it out. It's very helpful if you have issues related to inner child or past trauma, which I, by the way, think that a lot of people have. Also me, probably. Finally, this is from a newsletter post I wrote. So if you read this far, you might as well do this too. Yes, I know you're in MH, but put your I know this already cap aside for a moment, okay? You're probably not breathing deeply either, so let's fix that first. Close your eyes and slowly inhale until your lungs are full. Uh, then slowly release it. Repeat this a few times until you feel calmer. Feeling a little bit better? Now I take a moment to do this. Focus on... Is it actually... No, it's not that long. Uh, focus on sensations, not on thoughts. Take note of every situation, uh, sensation arising and coming into awareness in the body. Note, uh, not in the mind or in thoughts, just focus on sensations like curled toes, clenched teeth, dry mouth, pain in the back. So continue to breathe gently and deeply. Allow the sensations to prevail without labeling and calling them anything. Like it's my ulka. That's a label, not a sensation. <laughs> that is important. Focus on the sensation. Ignore mental pictures, inner dialogue and all thoughts that arise. This may take a few attempts. And yeah, it's quite actually meditation, by the way. But yeah, welcome the sensations without resisting. Do this by breathing into the sensations. Just let go, trying to stop them or make them go away. If you if you do this right, see the third step and the fourth, you will realize that the sensations are slipping away, almost become more diffused. The ball of energy behind each one is dis uh, dissipating. If not gently, go back to number one. The key is resistance. The thoughts, imagery, labeling, and that is just trying to push away the feeling of discomfort. Follow it up with the serenity prayer again, or just ask God or whatever your higher power is called. Please let me know what is the meaning of this suffering. What a thoughtful comment. Thank you so much for taking the time to share this. It has helped me too. So glad. To thank you. We'll definitely give some of these things a go there's really helpful and really appreciate it yeah i think it's actually been a fucking amazing text there and i also really appreciate that so i'm gonna like it can i please can i scroll 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 I'm gonna upload that but yeah i think uh, this is the point where i want to stop the episode and stop recording i i think that i'm gonna ride my bike today um it's not the best weather to do so but I certainly don't care because I, I need to do something. I need to get my head, I think, in a different place, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to see you the next time. So I wish you the best health of happiness and all success. And also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered. Which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and then being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. And yeah, let me set. Um, going to see you the next time. So bye bye. Please take care.